right, here we go. Hello, and welcome to episode what seventy seven zero. What say yo? What's going on? A lot is uh, what has happened since the last episode. Ugh. Well, we went on tour. We went on tour. We uh, saw Captain America. So Captain America. Excellent. Awesome. Excellent movie. So we saw Sebastian. Maniscalco. Oh, Maniscalco? Maniscalco. I always say Maniscalco. 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 It was fucking great. He's funny. I got, um, uh, you know, I still keep in touch with the fire department and stuff. And I, this one guy who's a buddy of mine is a chief. He's, uh, not the guy that I would that I would expect to get this text from, but he texted me this week and was like, "I just saw that comedian Sebastian Maniscalco. He's funny. Yeah. He was going on about how funny." And this chief's like sixty years old. I was like, yeah. "Oh, that's pretty cool." Um, and we were talking about that, but it made me feel like that guy is because he's big. Oh yeah, but I feel like he's on the verge. I think of being the biggest comic on the planet. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. I was like, if a sixty-year-old FDNY chief is like going to see his show, yeah. this guy is. He's, yeah, he's made he's made in the last like two or three years. He just, I mean, I I knew of him, but I didn't really like. I think with his la with what's wrong with people, I think it was called. Oh, aren't you embarrassed? It's the first nef it's the first Netflix special that that came up. That's where I really was like, oh man, he made a leap from his last special to this special, yeah. and then now he just he's he's like every word see, he every says. Every word, every, it's funny. every word. Yeah, every word. Yeah. How many comedians have that? I, don't, I can't think of many. Like it's not even like every line is funny. Every <laughs> fucking word. I know. And he we, doesn't even make a he doesn't make a motion on stage that's not funny. Right. He 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 doesn't even make a motion. It's got to be exhausting, man. It's got to be exhausting. But I I like because we saw him in Vegas and. He had an opening act that was fucking hysterical. Mike Young. Shout out to Mike Young. He's Mike there. Young. And Mike Young was so funny. I yeah. was like, how the fuck is Sebastian going to follow this? <laughs> and then he comes out and he's just fucking, he's just. Oh, he comes out and doesn't even say a word. <laughs> no, he's, just you know, he's so keyed into his audience yeah. now, too. It's unbelievable. But yeah, he's just ridiculous. But how do you, because you are, you're, you're making headways into stand-up comedy like I am trying to start to finally make headways into comics and stuff like that like actual comics you stand up comics and like I just, oh, comic books sorry. comic books and i look at it and i'm like they're just like some of the best writing ever being done is being done today it's like how am i throwing my hat in this fucking ring yeah but that's the literally the worst way to look at it there's no way in the world you can compare yourself yeah I, you can't compare yourself any no one you i can't compare myself to sebastian maniscalco you're talking about you talking about easily one of the best, you know, you know, you know, depending on your tastes, right? The best of fifty course. comics on the planet, depending on your tastes, right? You know, and if he's up your alley, or whatever, you can't deny the guy. It's a he's in the best, whatever. I think he's top five comics working right he's now. Unbelievable, and he's gonna be one. He's gonna be one of the best. So you can't just. It's like comparing yourself to like a Tiger Woods or whatever. You can't just come in and yeah. be like, because no, even even amazing comics, the co even. The, legendary comics or, or comics that are just really, really, really well known right now, you know, you have to do your own thing. You can't compare yourself. I, I may never kill in a room like, like he kills in a room for 60 straight minutes, having people doubled over 60 straight minutes. That's impossible to achieve. It's an unrealistic goal. So right. I just, I could only compare myself against myself. So I, if I do better than I did the last time, I'm happy. So it's if like I golf. Do, <laughs> that's what I always say. Yeah. It's like golf. I always say that because in comedy, there's thousands and thousands of comics. You go nuts comparing yourself to other people. I think everyone's better than me, and I'll never feel different. All right. You know, so it's just the wrong. I try not to focus on that because I don't see. I don't know. It's easier for me to look at someone and be like, "Oh, that was a really smart thing to say. Oh, that's a really good idea. Oh, that's a really good concept, or that's a really good point of view on something." But I never see it like in myself. So I don't know. I just – you can't – definitely can't compare yourself to him. I mean he's just – It's just discouraging. That's why watching him is, is both inspiring and discouraging <laughs> right. at the exact same time. Right. But it's so funny. I, I, when I watch him, I don't even – like the first time I'll see his material, the second time I watch it just to enjoy it. Right. I don't even pick it apart or anything. I just laugh like anyone else. And then like 
if I go see him again and, and I watch the same material, I pay attention to try and learn something from him. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, he's so funny. He's so funny. And like, you know, I mean, right now for me, it's like, and they're, they're very different, but I think Bill Burr, obviously, right. is like one of the best comics on, on the planet. Unbelievable. Uh, and then I have all the favorites too, but every one of them is different, but he's just got, he just got his, he just really came into his own. I mean, it's just like, so it precise seems quick too. Right. Oh no. He, I think he's been a comic for yeah. 20 years. Oh really? Yeah. He's that old. Yeah, he's 42, I think. Oh, he said it on stage. He's about our age. Okay. Yeah, I guess but, yeah, I just No, does. he's been doing comedy. I I mean, if it's my I don't know, but I I think I'm about 20 years probably. All right. All right. So I'm not quick at all. Nah. Funny guy. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Funny guy. Um and then uh yeah, that was the weekend we were there for. We, so we went to Jeter's golf tournament again. Anything happen eventful there that we could share? I mean, look, I I have a new boyfriend, and his name is, uh, you know, Tina Martinez. Oh God, <laughs> Jesus Christ Almighty! Uh, so Derek Jeter has his charity uh, golf tournament, uh, and we got invited last year. We got invited back this year. We went. And- Tur- Turner is who owns our network. Right. Is a big sponsor of the it. Turn Two Foundation. That's why we get invited, not because yeah, not because like Derek Cheetah. <laughs> we we are listen. <laughs> well, now Derek knows us. Finally, we went back two years. We did we did yeah. some some stuff from. So now, but. well, I, I mean, if you're listening to this podcast, chances are you're a fan of Impractical Jokers. Chances are you know you just like us or what we put forth. Um, so you might feel kindly towards us, but trust me when I tell you, like we we are. We're we're nobody on the landscape of entertainment. I would hope and assume you know that. I don't know. You know what I mean? But it's like right. in that position, like we're just – like I, we walk into that room and I still feel like I don't belong there. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? I don't know if we'll ever feel different than that. But yeah. I, I just right. feel out of place. I feel like I don't <laughs> – I feel awestruck. You know yeah, what I mean? That I'm, yeah, yeah. That I'm there like – um, well, with some of our sports heroes, I don't always feel awestruck. I don't feel I don't really get star. I don't really care about like you neither. But like yeah, but with Jeter, it's like I oh mean, my he's, god, he's a living legend. Yeah, he's a legend. Well, that's what I, when I walked up to Jeter, when I walked up to Tino, and when I walked up to Jorge Posada, yeah. I just walked up. I'm like, hey, how are you? They're like, hi. I'm like, oh, I love you. <laughs> you did. <Yeah. laughs> and they're like, oh, thanks. I'm like, no, no, look at me. Look at me in my eyes. I love you. I, I looked at the way you saw it and I was like, I want to be with you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you did say that. Yeah, yeah. he kind of got it. Yeah, he, it took him a second. He, he was hinging on your reaction. I went up to him and I creepily put my hand on his shoulder and I was like, I want to be with you. And like, there was a weird second and everybody started laughing and then he started laughing. Um, but these guys were, um, for us, you know, when Sal and I used to go to Yankee games on the regular, right. we used to have season tickets. Like right. this, this was our team. Right, right. Like, right. and we have specific. I know I do. We talked about it after the event. Specific memories of watching these guys play in the stadium and like moments of my life and my youth. Because really, like Jeter started in ninety four, right? Uh, so ninety six, ninety five, but ninety six was his right. first full year. Okay. Um, and we were just fresh out of high school. We were ba- we're basically his age, so we went. Yeah, he's, he's like our, he's like two years older than us too. You know what's so crazy? Yeah. Not to even interrupt you, but like they feel like adults, but then they're, they're our peers. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, yeah, it's just weird. Even athletes now that are like they start pro athletes start at like nineteen, yeah. twenty one, twenty three that are getting drafted, and then they they suit up, and I'm like, oh wow, I know. <laughs> look at that. Me. Yeah, yeah. Like we're old enough to be literally old enough. To be more than, more than I would I would venture more than thirty to fifty percent of professional athletes were old enough to be with their fathers. Right, it's crazy. Yeah. So we're there, and and like Derek Jeter is. I'm actually writing uh, a, a bit on it now. Not not. I'm writing I'm writing something now, and it's about me, what it's like to meet Derek Jeter in person, which is like it's almost like meeting a third race. He's he doesn't come off as human. Right, he's yeah. like he's perfect in every way. He's just he's, just, <laughs> he's like glowing. He's gl- His teeth are white. Yeah, he's, he's so very put nice. together. He looks at you and he's looking at you. Yeah, he look. He knows how to do that. Yeah, he looks right in your eyes. Oh. He puts his hand on your shoulder. Yeah, and he's like, awesome. You matter. He makes you feel like he, he makes you feel like you matter, <laughs> yeah. and you're his friend when you're not. But <laughs> you're not. Also, there's not a wrinkle in his clothes. Oh, Jesus, that's Christ. a phenomenon to me. Yeah. I look. I saw him every day for four days straight. Every outfit. 
I looked him up and down rigorously. Yeah. There wasn't a crease. You, you know when you – this is something I fucking can't stand. When I'm getting ready for something, especially if I'm putting on a suit. Right. You put on a suit in, in the house. If you put the shirt on, you go to do your tie, the fucking the arms, arms are wrinkled you immediately. You look like a fucking sloppy piece of shit yeah, you look, immediately. You look, your arms look like two accordions. Right. Right? Or you, you put on your slacks. You put on your pants. You go to tie, sit down and tie your shoe. Right in the crotch. It gets right. all bunchy. Right. And, uh, right? Might have something to do with our bodies. <laughs> As opposed to his. Yeah, but I've had that my whole life, even when I was skinny. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? But whatever. Then you go in the car. You you, you put your, you put your jacket in the back seat. You hang it up. You put the belt on. The belt puts up, the, the seat belt. Puts up. I get by the time I I, I right. unwrap out of the plastic a suit, like like it's off the shelf. Right. By the time I get to the christening, whatever the fuck it is, I literally <laughs> look like a homeless person. Right now, I'm watching this guy. He's he he didn't have a goddamn. He didn't birds. have a. It's because we're talking about Jeta. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he didn't. Just have, birds appear. <laughs> <laughs> Why do birds? <laughs> no, he didn't have a crease on him. No. And I'm watching. He's sitting. He's standing. He's shaking hands. And I don't know if he gets like super super material in his suits or whatever. I don't know. But the guy doesn't have a flaw. It's weird. It's unbelievable. It's weird. And How friendly was he? He's well, so f- Dude, and it's not even just to us. Like, I saw him in so many situations. He's talking to the president of Turner. Yeah. He's handling himself. He's on the golf course when I guess he's golfing with people who just donated enough money to golf with him. And they are drunk and rowdy. Um, they would annoy me to fucking. They, know they were him. annoying, and I can't tell. He seems sincere. I can't tell if Derek was like just like having a l- good laugh with it because it seemed like he was. He just seems like he's enjoying it. Yeah. So he. So the thing is that like what happens is like all these clients and people from like Turner and people that donated, they get to golf with for sports celebrities and what and whatnot or, or actors or whatever. So you get teamed up, right? So so like Derek Jeter will get teamed up with like two carts of people. And they're probably most likely those are like big shots and you know, right? But they get it, it, look. The weekend is just for fun. No one's really taking the tournament too serious. No, it's best ball. It's, it's best ball. Yeah, it's it. nonsense. And there's varying degrees of drunkenness, and we'll get to this in a bit because <laughs> Haley Joe Wildsmith. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> so the people with Jeter are we're so we should say. We were spons- we sponsored a hole, the Impractical Jokers. Yeah. So we were at the 18th hole and we were, you know, we had drinks there. We had music. We had prizes and shit. So everyone yeah. who came through, we'd hang with, take some pictures. We'd golf with, we'd mess around with. So, but we were the last hole. So by the time people got to us, they were pretty, t- they, right. they had tied one up. Long day in the sun, drinking all day. So there's party holes where you go to certain holes and it's just, there's, out, a, there's a bartender serving you drinks. Right. You hang out there. There's waitresses and like schoolgirl outfits. Like it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> so, so Jeter, Jeter's group gets to us and they are tanked. Yeah. And Jeter get, Jeter, I mean, he's so cool. He has that like cool suave, like when he talks, it's very soft spoken, but he's got like a little smirk going, but he never really like, he never really breaks out of the pocket of that right there. Right. He's always just like a little soft spoken, a little humorous, got a little smirk on him. He doesn't show emotion like, Anger or cracking up, or he just stays right. in that cool pocket. Even if you right? say something funny and it's legit funny, he, his laugh is is like almost like a polite laugh. Yeah, but he's really laughing. Like he's right. just cool. Right, the guy's just cool. He's too cool. He's in control of everything. He's so cool. <laughs> right. So I always said, me and my buddies were from back from school. Always said, like, if we had to be one of the guy, one of the guy, it would like be a tie between who we think are the two coolest. Yeah. Uh, Around our age, which sure. would be Jeter, it would be Jeter or Timberlake. Oh, those are great choices. Yeah, they're great just too cool. Choices, they yeah. look good in any outfit. He, that yeah. son of a bitch, Justin Timberlake, pulls off a fedora. Who yeah. pulls off a fedora? Nobody. Nobody. Well, Him and Sinatra. He pulls it off, and unfortunately, he makes other people think they could pull it off. Yeah, That's the only yeah, thing yeah. about Timberlake. Yeah, but he's very, very smooth. Timberlake's, yeah, yeah of course, he's a trendsetter too. Well, I'll like tell you that. what, Timberlake got married. Yeah, I mean to. Jessica Beale, so yeah. congrats, well done. Yeah. But Jeter is not married, dates just the most beautiful woman on the planet. Is he not engaged? I don't think so, but you never hear a bad word about it. And this is a guy who dated every beautiful model that came Everybody. through New York City. You yeah, never right. heard a bad word about him. You never heard anything. He was just classy on the field. He was classy off the field. Yeah. The only – How does he keep that shit under wraps? Well, I heard no. that he makes people sign a – Non-disclosure. Yeah, yeah, which makes sense. Uh, 
Well, the only, the only, and, and tell me if you remember anything else, the only controversy I ever remember with Jeter on the field was, remember before A-Rod was a Yankee, he would chat to A-Rod a little too friendly and that annoyed people. Do you remember right, that? Right, People right. like, come on, he's the fucking enemy. You can't be talking to him like that on the field. Yeah. Like they were joking. That's it. That's that's how bottom of the barrel they had to scratch to, right, get, to, get, right. their, to get some sort of controversy right. with this guy. Uh, he starts a charity foundation that fucking helps, you know, millions of, of underprivileged children. <laughs> like he sticks with it. He's involved. He gets his sister, his whole family involved. The guy is, he's just the closest thing we have to a superhero on this fucking planet. He, he is engaged. He's engaged. Jeter and Davis became engaged in 2015. So unless that's off, which according to Wikipedia, it's not. Yeah, but that's all right. You know what? Good for him. The guy had a hell of a career on the field and off the field, and now he's better. To re- he's ready to retire in both ways. Five foot nine and a half model, twenty six years old. By the way, she turned twenty six this week. <laughs> I love the guy. Uh, personal life. Uh, in early November, former j- confirmed that they're engaged. Well, what's her name? Hannah Davis. All right, let's look. Let's all she's, look so she's, she's very pretty. I'm sure. Of course, she's from the Virgin Islands. Very exotic. Uh Ooh. oh wow she was did you see the remake of Vacation? Yes. She played Christy Brinkley's role oh, that got hit by the truck. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Let's see a list of who Jeter, Jeter has dated here. Mariah Carey, Vita Guerra, who's that model with the butt? Yeah. I mean they all have a butt, but Vanessa Manillo, Jordana Brewster, Jessica Biel. Oh, so she she bounced from cool guy. Oh shit! Really? Oh yeah. There you go. Oh, there you go. Um. So anyway, these people are rip roaring drunk, and uh, Gita gets off, and he's like, "Yo, guys, this is hysterical." He's the way he talks is like he's got like that LL cool. He's like, "Yo, guys, yo, this is hysterical. Come here for a second. And he like brings us in. He's like, "Where do you see these people in my cart?" He's like, "They're it's hysterical." He's like, "They're so drunk, they're out of control, man. I'm having a ball." You know, something like that. It's just like, really, Derek? And then the guys, these guys and girls get off the cart, and this guy can't even stand up. They stole a cactus uh-huh. from an earlier hole, a potted cactus. They're holding the cactus. They throw the cactus down. They they start, they put the ball on the cactus, and they're teeing off off the cactus. Yeah. And mind you, not everyone's like this, but this was the 18th order. And they're just swiping, and they, they, they're chopping the cactus. <laughs> I don't like that. I tried to stop yeah, it. I was yeah, like, yeah, guys, yeah. must you kill the cactus? But they were so drunk. There was no getting around. Yeah, yeah, but 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 that wasn't the the, the 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 part that Derek was laughing at was there's an older dude who was very drunk, but he was like very like he was he had great one liners and he said the guy couldn't even stand or look straight, but then when he golfed it was unbelievable. Oh right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's like, this guy's my new best friend right yeah. here. But uh, it was really really funny. Um, and there was other people and uh, some of the people. I, I had the uh, I actually have people uh, I have a list of people who were there. Um, Kevin from the Office, Brian Baumgartner was there. Yeah, again. He's, he's awesome. He's fucking amazing. He's but Tino Martinez. This is how we oh, got so started. Tino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so we. I mean, Tino Martinez is, is he's a, I'll say it exactly. Right. He's the only person right. on the planet that could have replaced Don Manning. Right, and that is what I'm saying. There is accolades. Right, I mean, it, there's no other person. Right. He came in and was just as classy, right. just as good, just beloved. And then, and then People gave us all those championships. Yeah. And he just was. He was like he was all class. He was like yeah. Jeter, all class. You know, it was he, him, and Paul O'Neill. Paul O'Neill was my favorite Yankee of all right. time. I, I love the anger and right. the fucking rage. But Tino, Tino was 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 uh, I'd say top top three, maybe even the second. Love the guy, yeah. love the guy. And he came up to us and he was like, "Hey man, I'm a fan of Impractical Jokers." And you could have watched Sal and I's head fucking explode over right. the goddamn place. It was really out of everybody we've met. He was real. That was really like one of the most special moments. To me, yeah, yeah, and then he turns out to be such a great fucking guy. Oh, it's the best. He's then like, I watch my kids. phone numbers, and yeah. then I'm texting Tino Martinez. Yeah, jokes like we're texting yeah. jokes now, and I'm like, this is the fucking like. This is why, if you ever hear me complain about this TV show, you just gotta say the words to me, Tino Martinez, man. Hey. Like I'd never be in that position, and the guy's so nice. I, I, 
there's nothing like I I don't even know how to talk about because I feel like I'm talking about a girl that I have a crush on right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's so fucking great, man. We were in that, in, we went to the after party and we're both standing there. We're talking about how out of place we are. Yeah, he's like, I never go to a club. He's like, once a year for Derek. Come yeah, come that's it. He's like, I just want to go home to bed. And I'm like, well, that's it. Let's just go home to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was fun. And we went so yeah. So and then he, you know his kids were uh, Tino's kids. Yeah, were uh, fans. Right. And so he's like, oh, do me a favor, make a video f- for my right. son. So we're like, yeah. So we get on, we make a video for his son. He sends his son. His daughter got pissed, <laughs> and she's he's like, oh, my daughter's gonna come. Can you? Make a video for her, and so we get on the video for his daughter. And we're like, "Yeah, we heard you were pissed off. Yeah, that we made a video for your brother, but it's not all about you." But and then Joe's like, "Yeah, you bitch." <laughs> He's a lunatic. <laughs> and Tino's hysterical in the background, yeah. and he jumps in the back. He's like, "I didn't sell him to say that." <laughs> uh, but it, it was like it's so weird to talk to someone that you looked at as like just like a, a legend. And then you, it's it's great to just realize everyone's just people, you know what yeah. I mean? Like is that, um, but there was a lot of uh, uh, athletes there, and uh, we go to this uh, after party, uh, which is just like you know, f- right after they have the formal dinner, they said, "Oh, come, you know, to this little thing." So we get it. We would normally get never get in otherwise, and right. and they they. Well, we still had to wait online, and the only, the only reason we got in as fast as we did is because Fatone, Joey Fatone, was with us, <laughs> and that was it. They were like, "Oh, Fatone, get in!" And Fatone was like, "These guys are with me." And got us in. <laughs> So uh, so we go in and uh, you know we're, we're in the a section the designated section. Yeah. So I go in and sit down on a little couch there, and I didn't realize you know I just sat down and I'm looking around I'm looking around me and this is around me was right next to me was first of all first of all Jerome Bettis who is Steelers running right, back you're a big, yeah, yeah. Sal's a big Steelers fan he's the us. nicest guy in the world he's like a big teddy bear yeah and he said, he's telling me I'm like because two years in a row we're, with, we're there with him yeah and I'm like oh man I was like you know dude you don't understand how much Steelers memory really that I have of you and otherwise and he's like yeah bring that I'll sign it and I'm like yeah they tell us not to bring anything he's like He's like, what's the matter with you? <laughs> he's like, throw this stuff in a duffel bag, bring it. And he's like, who's going to tell me not to sign it? So right. I was like, all right, so I'll bring it next year. But I'm si- sitting in a, in a, in a booth. Um, I look, just I just glance up. It's Jerome Bettis. I'm sitting with Jerome Bettis, John Starks uh-huh. from the Knicks, yeah. Gary Sheffield yeah. from the Mariners, um, Jeter, Tino Martinez, uh-huh. uh and there was there was even more, and I'm just I'm like, what the f- oh E from Entourage was there, <laughs> yeah. Kevin Connolly, I should yeah, say, yeah, who's really who's really nice, really, really sweet dude, yeah, uh, and, and 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 me, right, <laughs> and I was just like, what am, what am I doing? And, and behind you is Joe Gatto pole dancing. <laughs> Did you yeah, see that? Yes, he's a fucking crazy. Gatto has doesn't drink. Has never had a drop of alcohol, or he had one drink in his life. Yeah. But he, but when he gets going, he acts drunker than anybody. He looks like he's coked out. Yeah, and he's just pole dancing in a club, yeah. like full on pole dancing. <laughs> <laughs> he's the fucking funniest guy, man. Uh, uh, okay. And then Sebastian came and joined us because that was after his show and everything, right. and it was just surreal. It yeah. was like really weird. It, 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 he's and he, I went to say goodbye to you guys, and Sebastian, he makes me laugh saying goodbye. But the way he says goodbye is fucking what you, funny. What you I go, I go, ah, he's like, ah, I'm going to get out of here. And he's like, oh, you're going home? <laughs> <laughs> and I go, yeah. He's like, I'm getting tired. He's like, yeah, I don't want to stay. <laughs> and, I, and, I go, and I go to open my mouth to reply and he screams, you don't want to stay. <laughs> and I'm dying laughing. I'm like, this guy's fucking great. <laughs> He's just so funny. He's funny, man. Oh, uh, and then, uh, and then, and then I'm sitting there, and I'm like, "Oh, this is pretty cool." Uh, uh, for the people's Legion of Skanks fans, Lewis J. Gomez is with us too. We're all hanging out, and I'm sitting there talking to Lewis. I'm like, "This is surreal. Look around. He doesn't watch sports." And I'm like, uh, "He's these guys are all living legends." Right. And then at that exact moment, a waitress spilled one a tray of drinks on me only. <laughs> Cause you're Sal. Well, cause I'm Sal. I, I was like, this is just really memorable. And, and I, and all of a sudden I just, it literally, it literally felt like I got either shot, pissed myself, waterboarded all at the same time. Every piece of my body, every piece was saturated. Yeah. She dumped a carafe and the surrounding six drinks on me. 
<laughs> it went on me only. And it, you know when you like you get oh it hits the ground, you get a splash. Yeah. You get shrapnel. <laughs> you got that well, too. <laughs> that that didn't even happen. They just all fell right <laughs> on me. So yeah, yeah it, or it gets to your ankle. Right, right. like that. It fell in my uh, on my chest, crotch, and knees, and and then it just soaked in. And I stood up, and I was saturated, uh. saturated. And she's like, "Oh my god, I'm so sorry." And I'm like, "Yeah, I, 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 I <laughs> nothing even came out of my mouth. I didn't even know what to do or say. I was like, and and people were just looking at me like, <gasps> like with their mouths yeah. open. And then like she came back with. Literal like bath towels, and I just was saturated How much for the rest of the night. Because I left, I was gone. Uh, I don't even recall. Not too much longer after yeah. that, because I was like, "Fuck this!" But, yeah. uh, but anyway, um, something else I wanted to talk about. Uh, right. Speaking of, uh, we well, not speaking of this, but we 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 just were on tour. Yes, and. Should I talk about? Should I talk about what happened at my hotel? Yeah, I mean, why not? I mean, it's fucking crazy. It's insane, right? I mean, what are you afraid? The worst that's going to happen has already happened, right? So, so last week I'm on tour and I, I, and we're on Twitter. I'm on Twitter and I and I'm joking around with some friends and I write clearly. It's it's in the context of a conversation that's purely joking around. And then someone mentions me, and people are ripping on each other going back and forth, and they're hashtagging FTW, which is for the win, meaning like, what a zinger, right? Right. Like, sick burn. And I write, someone zings me, and I just write, I hate myself, I want to die, hashtag for the win. It's not even a tweet, it's a response, so it doesn't even go out to everybody. Six hours later, we've performed two shows, and we are back at our hotel. I get into my pajamas. Four Myers, right? Is it four? It was in uh, no Fort Lauderdale. No, 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 no Lakeland. It was Lakeland. Lakeland. Okay. And we were staying in Tampa. Right. That's right. That's right. Right. I get back to my hotel. I literally put on my pajamas. I'm eating some dinner and laying in bed in the dark, ready to go to bed. And there's a pounding at my door. And I'm thinking it's one of you guys. And so I don't get up right away because I'm thinking maybe you're joking or something. Or I'm thinking it's like. Hopefully not someone who – or just drunk people knocking on doors right, and stuff. Right, right. So they keep pounding. So I'm like, what is this? And I hear like walkie-talkies. So I get up and I walk and I look through the peephole and it looks like police and medics. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? So I just crack open the door. Then I'm like, they clearly have the wrong room. And I crack open the door and I'm like, hello? And they're like – they shine a flashlight in my face, completely blind me. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. And like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And I'm like, whoa. And then they're like, I'm like, can I help you? I think you're the wrong room. They're like, are you, what's your name? And I was like, Sal Volcano. And they're like, you know, we have the right room. And at this point, I'm thinking 100% this is part of the TV show. Okay, that makes sense. Uh-huh. I'm like, they right. got me. They're going to try and get me somehow, whatever it is. So I'm like, can I help you? They're like, yeah, we got a call that you're planning to kill yourself. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And I don't even think of the tweet at this point. Right. Like, why would I? It was a joke. And I didn't even say I was going to kill myself. Right. I said I want to die. Right? So I'm like... What? They go, you plan to kill yourself? I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, we got a call, an anonymous call that says you're planning to harm or kill yourself. And we need to make sure you're not planning to harm yourself or others. And they're like, let's see your hands. Cause I was, I had a napkin in one hand and my other hand was still holding the doorknob. They're like, let's see your hands. I'm like, what? They're like, we still haven't seen your hands. We need to see your hands. So I take my hand out and I show my hands and I'm like, is this a, is this a joke? And one of the, it was four cops and two EMTs. And one of the old cops, like a white-haired cop, is like, I forget this. You tell him. And he, and he storms away. He's like pissed off that I, I just said, is this some kind of joke? And then the other lady's like, no, it's not a joke. We got a call. I was like, he's, she's like, apparently you tweeted you're going to kill yourself. And I'm like, this is a joke. This is a joke. She's like, no. I'm like, she goes, did you tweet that? I go, no. And I'm sitting there. I'm trying to think because I'm disoriented, right? I'm just like trying to think. I'm like. I mean, six hours ago, I was in a conversation with one of my friends that was completely humorous where I said, I hate myself and want to die, hashtag for the win. I was like, is that what you're talking about? She's like, we don't know, but we got the call. I'm like, who the fuck? And I'm thinking it's you guys, right? It's got to be you guys, but it wasn't. And then I'm like, how do you know where I'm staying? And they're like, the caller knew your hotel and room number. 
And I was like, that's completely impossible. But that turned out in the end not to be correct, right? Yeah, I don't know, but what, I don't know where they got that information because I talked to our tour manager who said the cops came to the venue first, right. which is in a different county or a different city. And they, they called the cops from where the hotel was. So could not, I had left already. They called us, they said this is called a wellness check. So they went to the venue and I had already left. So the Lakeland cops called the cops in the next county and made, and put the report and made them come to find me. But Jeff said the Lakeland cops said that the caller, who was a female from New York, said that I probably was staying in a hotel right next to the venue. All right. So if this is – I don't know how to take this. I, I really think someone overstepped their boundaries. You like, know, Like some fucking idiot? Yeah. Like if, right. I mean you're a f- – if you're someone – who just follows me on Twitter and is following a conversation, albeit public, and you can't discern that it's not even a tweet and it's it's a conversation between friends that's humorous. So either you're looking to get a rise out of me or do something funny or you're in a position where you can't discern that that wasn't me telling the world that I'm going to commit suicide. You're that worried for my well-being. I mean, like, I, I don't know. I, I was pissed. And then I was like, well, I mean, I know. what, But it's so funny. So then I'm like, then the lady goes, listen, I know who you are, the cop says. Right. She's like, so maybe it's one of your friends doing this. And I was like, I assure you that one of the guys didn't do that. Now that I'm thinking of it, I'm like, I assure you. I'm like, so you weird. are a professional who is risks your time and life right. on your job. You, they're not going to do that for you to come to my hotel room and waste your time. So she's like, well, she's like, and the guy, and then the other cop goes, yeah, just, uh, I, I watched too. And he goes, and I, 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 she goes, she, she showed to me. I didn't even see your show till last week. And now I'm here. This is crazy. I was like, this is the old guy cop? No, there's oh, another, another guy. I was like, okay, thanks. And then she's like, what are you eating? Crab? <laughs> Cause I, cause we, I got seafood. I got like a lobster tail that I was eating or whatever from the venue. And I was like, no lobster. And she's like, oh yeah, it smells good. And I was like, thanks. And now it's shifted from to just the conversation, yeah, but weird to even weirder. Right. And I was just like, and she, I was like, the they kept insisting that the caller knew my room number. I was like, that is a billion percent impossible. It's just impossible. And then they're like, all right. And then they asked me a total. They asked me a total. They asked me two more times at that, but they asked me a total of five times. She goes, all right. Even after all that, she goes, all right. Are you planning to harm yourself? I was like, no. She's like, are you sure? I was like, yes. She goes, are you planning? Well, that's to- her training. She's just are like- you planning to harm anyone else? I'm like, no. All right. And I was like, I'm a comedian. And then she's like, all right. And she's like, well, and then they just kind of left. And it was the weirdest fucking experience I've ever had in my life. Yeah, that's pro- that's one of the problems with social media, man. It's like that's that's a that's a to we, me we still have no clue how they how they found the hotel i was in and I how think they that's a crazy thing. and how they found my room i was in right we don't by the way you'll never i mean like, we don't even log it well, we don't we don't we don't use our names at all right. and we also block anything like no one's allowed to give out information from of us well if the cops asked the hotel they might have told them but why wouldn't the cops just tell me we had to ask downstairs then she insisted mm-hmm. the caller knew i don't know i don't know they but that's fucking weird, man. I'd love to know who it was. I know. You know. I mean, look, if if the person's listening and you mistook it and you thought there and you thought you were doing something good, I I, I get it. Cause you if you're a fan of mine, you don't want to see me die, but I don't know how they didn't get the context of of how of what it was being said. Well, people are dopes. Yeah. There's a lot of dopes in the world. What I, I was like, this cannot be real. That was weird because we were getting the texts. The texts were coming in and we were just like, Murray thought it was Stanhope fucking with you. Right, right. But it was just like, there's just no No, I've no confirmed way. it was not Stanhope. I, I knew it wasn't Stanhope. He's yeah. not going to pull shit like that. Yeah. That's not his style. Yeah, very odd, man. I don't but know. That's like, it's like the equivalent of like calling in like a bomb scare or something. Well, look, if let's say you were really going to hurt yourself. And this person called and it stopped you. Like then, you know, they're they're a, a hero. But what I, I they're sending the police in to see. Like also, I didn't write like this is it. I'm gonna kill myself now. Bye. Yeah, it's, it's so in a, it's in a, 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 a the context of a of a funny conversation of friends ripping on each other. And I just said I hate myself. I want to die for the win. 
I get, dude, it's one of the reasons, like, I've largely stepped back from social media because, like, there's that thing where it's like, it's annoying to write a joke and have people be like, are you okay? Like, yeah. like, don't worry, it'll be okay. Yeah. It's just like, you, like, to me, just my personality, who I am, I don't know if I'm an asshole or not, but if I write something that's clearly a joke or, or is, n- or has nothing to do with anything, and someone's like, you'll be alright, you'll get through, you'll be okay, I look at them as presumptu- 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 presumptuous, presumptuous, Presumptuous. Presump, yeah, but there's a presumptive. Name. Presumptive. Yeah. I just look at him like you're a, you're an arrogant asshole. Right. Like it's like like who the fuck are you? Like <laughs> like, like you're reading what I wrote and and like interpreting, and then you are the person to sit there and be like, it's gonna be okay. It's social media. It <sighs> it gives a it, it changes the the the, the landscape. It's like you think of- I have no people in my life that I would turn to <laughs> to make myself feel well? Right. Like fuck off. Like <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Like, take your concern and shove it up your fucking... We may get a little Diamond BQ here, but, like, take your concern and just... I don't want it. Uh, I don't want it. Well, the thing for me is not even that. It's like... It's like when they don't get a joke. Uh, like it's, it's always a joke. Like Have I, you ever said anything serious on Twitter? No, no. It's always a joke. I wrote a jerk-off joke once. I, I literally wrote a fucking uh, hand job joke. Uh, I wrote... I just call them endings. I could never be happy. Uh, and no one... 90% of the, well, not 90, but like, like half the people thought that I was just talking about like my life, like, like the ending of my life. Like this, this chapter will come to a close right. and I will not be happy in it. And they were like, how could you say that? I'm like, guys, it's a fucking hand job. That's joke. it, dude. I delete tweets now. I delete it if I ever, I, I wrote one the other day. Somebody was just like, I wrote something about a video game and they're like, put the game down. Uh, you know, girls, girls are more important than video games going to date, something like that. And I wrote back, I don't know who this kid was, but he was funny. And I wrote back, uh, spoken like someone in their twenties, you know, the implication being like when you hit your forties, you don't give a fuck anymore. Of course. Dude, the fucking shit that came in like, (laughs) Oh, don't worry. You'll find someone someday. And and I'm just like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like you're a fucking idiot. Like whoever's raising you is raising you wrong. You're a fucking moron. (laughs) Like you think a guy? Yeah, people see us as a oh, lot fuck of our, them. a lot of our fans see us as people versus not comedians. I know. It's like fuck off. I know, but actually, but how do you feel about it? What do you mean? How do I feel? <laughs> <laughs> and this isn't to everybody. Like, like when you said ninety percent, I thought you were going to say ninety percent of the people get it. Like you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, it's, like a, it's just that fucking that's that well, that sliver this, of this, dope. This, this isn't that. This isn't that. But you know what? I, you know what? There's two pet peeve responses. That, there's two pet peeves one of responses that we get. And it, again, it's just a it's a numbers game. You're gonna get them. You're gonna get it, them. It's it's a numbers game. But uh, a pet peeve response. And this isn't that. This is when people try to uh, to be funny or whatever. But when I'll I'll tweet something, there's two thing two responses that are so annoying to get. Like, oh, what are you drunk? <laughs> I hate that. Like, Sal, what are you drinking? Right. I'll put down the bottle or you must be drunk. And then the other one is, go to bed. Time for bed. Yeah. It's like, yeah, shut yeah, yeah. up. You're not funny. <laughs> Fucking jerk off. I'm never drunk and I'm never tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never ready for bed. I'm not, I, never, I don't tweet. Like, it's just so funny. Uh, and look, I, just to clarify. I'm always tired, actually. And this isn't damn, this, I'm an idiot too. Like, I'm a fucking dope in my own ways, but it's just like, these people are fucking dopes. I think they're trying. I think those people are trying to make a connection. All right, but get to the bottom of that, and right. you see stupidity behind that too. Sure, I'm not You're saying trying to make a connection to a fucking perfect stranger, like over Twitter. Like, what yes. the fuck are you talking? Yeah, that's about? that's that is our that is life today. That is what oh, it is. God, that's and I the, guess this is just me getting old. The virtual socialness is uh, real. Is real to is real. I mean, I can't say that I've never had an ex- – well, no, this isn't the same. I was going to say like there are certain people that I have an exchange with that I'm like – I'm conscious of what I'm writing back in a way that I'm like, all right, I don't want to sound too this way or too that way. And I guess it's an extension of that but in a in a misguided way. Right. You know what I mean? Like if I was writing with someone I didn't know that well or respected a lot or yeah. something like that, I wouldn't fire or I, I would give it more thought than I would well, if I – Well, of course. But it's just like you wouldn't make the assumption that like you're their fucking psychological caretaker. This is the thing. I, I 
Yeah, I mean, you know what it is? It's like I think we see ourselves more as comedians and like a, a, a good amount of people that have found us aren't pure comedy fans. And so they don't they don't take our words as – as right. usually law to be comedic. And I, I guess, uh, you know, and, and again, it's like, I don't know. Like you look at the rock, right? Like that motherfucker, um, knows how to do social media. This is why I'm like, this is why I really just can't really go on too much anymore. He, he, if he, you know how, like we had a, we had a child on set the other day. We, we get make a wish kids on set all the time. Sure. We try and make it special. You don't know the kid's sick. The family's going through a hard time. But we never – even Murray doesn't do this. And he's probably the closest one of us that I feel uses social media like the tool that it probably should be. Right. Um, but The Rock will document that. He'll be like, this kid came to set today. Oh, you know what I mean? They'll take a picture of him flexing a bicep next to a kid in a wheelchair. <laughs> yeah. And then everybody's like, oh, Rock, you're the best. We love you. We're the best. You know what I mean? And it's just like – and I I don't know like – I. Like to me, and believe me, The Rock is a superior human being to me right. in every way, right. and I'm a fan of his. So I'm not ripping on him, but like to me, I I'm so uncomfortable with that level of self promotion and interaction yeah. that I feel like really I shouldn't even be on. I shouldn't even be on yeah, at but all. You're, you're allowed to feel that way. I mean, it's all right. It's, it's just it's because The Rock's not getting furious over fucking somebody being like, "You'll be okay." Like, why the fuck? Am I angry at that? Yeah, uh, we could probably, yeah, because you're, you're probably you're, we're probably looking too much into it too. The damage is in me, right. not in the person saying like, "Don't worry, you'll find someone someday." Right. Like I'm the problem. <laughs> you, I mean, you should skim over that. Like, oh, they get it, they don't get it. This one gets it, this one doesn't. I get can't it. skim over it. I, I look at it and, I, and then I, then I'll click on their fucking, and I know all I'm gonna <laughs> Why get. Why do you now. let it disaffect you? I know. I mean, all but- I'm gonna get now is people being like, "It's gonna be okay." <laughs> I, I deserve it. And I deserve it. And I deserve it. But like, I'll click on their profile. I'll look at their picture. And I'll stare at it and be like, you are fucking stupid. Like, there's oh, something j- wrong with you. <laughs> Someone, Joe, Joe texted me. Joe just texted me uh, yesterday because someone wrote to him. I mean, someone, Joe, Joe says to me, is everything all right? Joe texted me, is everything all right? And then he said, someone on Twitter uh, said to text you um, just in case. And, and, and it said, uh, text Sal, I really think something's wrong. <laughs> so <laughs> Joe crazy. writes me, is everything all right? <laughs> <laughs> Joe's kidding. Oh, he's kidding. Yeah, yeah he's Joe's kidding. completely kidding. Like, like, who is this person that thinks it's their place? Like, you spend every day with Joe Gatto. You think Joe would have picked up on, on if something was really bothering you was wrong? <laughs> like, this fucking... I, I honestly believe people mm. just... Dude, there's no filter with us because we really are just... The way we act on TV, you know, it's just like... I just think people just they yeah, feel a connection. That's so all. many people handle that connection well, right? Like, like, like I would even say the number is ninety eight percent of the people handle the interaction well. Yeah, but again, it's just numbers. I know, though. but it's I numbers. fucking can't stand that two percent. I can't stand them. <laughs> I can't fucking stand them. Am I okay? Uh, Fuck you. I'm okay. I mean, crossing a line is calling the police. Right. That's crossing a line. That person could eat a shit sandwich. <laughs> but <laughs> nah. I mean, it's just weird. It's just uh, weird. I mean, uh, you you can't tell that's a joke. I, I don't know. Look, what are you gonna do? You get the podcast. You turn on the mic, you open your fucking mouth on three hours sleep, and you end up fucking ripping apart teenage girls who are just concerned for your well-being. You look like an asshole. All right. I'm talking about me here. Oh, we were supposed to give somebody a shout out on this thing. Oh, Glass. John Glass? Something Glass. His last name's definitely Glass. Yeah. Well, originally we didn't give him a shout out, but then we were going to tell him to go fuck himself, remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go fuck yourself, too. Yeah. Glass. I forget. And then someone else, too. I know I told you. Look, it it was over the course of the tour. It was something they did for us, really sweet, and I said I would mention it. And... If I said that, that's I'm talking about you. I just forget. <laughs> I just forget. It's that personal touch. All right, dude. I, I want to. I, I want to talk. Uh, we got to go. We got like two hours of meetings ahead of us right now. Why don't we? Can we? Can we push? Push what? Push the first call. I mean, how many? There's a lot of people on it, aren't there? The first call. Isn't there like six people on it? All right. All right. I, I feel like we had so much more I to know. just get into. I have a new I have a new I have a new uh uh segment I wanted to intro this week. I even have a theme song for it and everything. Yeah, I want to go back to like playing games and yeah. fucking pontificating. Yeah. Uh, we we shall. We shall. Next week 
that you know, if you made it to the end of this, you know what it is is that this is what's happening. The the the, the podcast is we're so busy. The podcast is so spread apart that won't we we do this little catch up thing, right? So we're like filling people in on what's happened, but since they're not as infrequent, we don't just get to to, to the bullshitting right. enough. But uh, noted, noted, noted. So do me a favor, <laughs> log on and give us a high rate. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot. Uh, That's how we rank. What did I say that Go onto the tunes, the iTunes, take one second and say, hey, these guys are the tits, or these guys have tits, whichever one you want. <laughs> uh, that'll bump us up. Yeah, you know. And- the more it gets bumped up, the more we'll, we'll be like, oh shit, we cannot not do it this week. Because uh, we'll feel a more, I think, a more responsibility. That's, I'm just yeah, making that all up. I guess. I, you know what? I, I'm going to apologize for my behavior in this episode. Yeah, wow, that's a complete... Yeah, because, you know, you're feeling down. I think there's something wrong, maybe. Well, you know, I'm all right. I mean, people should probably be concerned. <laughs> I don't know. I, mean, I got I, Uncharted you know, 4. If people yesterday. love you and care for you, yeah. they're going to be concerned at the way you're acting because it's not like you. And I, I, Something yeah, might be... I mean, I something might on. be going on all inside right. and... Maybe you'd well, need, text Joe Gatto to check on. Maybe me. this was the cry for help. Maybe it's <laughs> ironic. It's it's very meta. The, the 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 them their concern for you sparked you to do another cry for help, which which came out in, right. in this and in, in rage and in, in in sleepy rage. Well, just stop calling the fucking cops. Yeah, there's no need to call the cops. I think that may have been what put me over, even though it happened to you. I don't know. <laughs> this, this episode's ending on a real fucking. <laughs> Down of a note, but what are you gonna do, pal? What's the date of that te- live? Tell him, Steve, Dave. Sure. July fifteenth, seven p.m. at the Gramercy Theater in New York City is a live. Tell him, Steve, Dave. All right, R- real quick. Then I'll just tell them really quick. Just go to the tenloins.com slash tour for our dates. June tenth, I believe, starts the new tour, and uh, it's gonna be fun. And we got some local shows too. To our local peeps, uh, we're playing Coney Island, July first, July seventh and eighth. We're playing the Borgata. And then uh, the third week of July, we're at Foxwoods. Mm. So come on out. It's the new tour. It's starting. Um, it's going to be, you know, in its newest form. And it's going to change. So there'll be something different to see in every show. Uh, and that is it, I think. Oh, if you're going to be in L.A. Um, on May, Monday, May 23rd, I am filming um, a segment for a Comedy Central show called This Is Not Happening. It's my buddy Ari Shafir's um, storytelling show, and it's going to be filming at Cheetahs. And you can get free tickets. Go to Ari's Ari Shafir's uh, website or Twitter, and uh, there's a link there to, to, to be part of the audience if you guys want to come. That'll be fun. Yeah. Uh, I think that's it for now. All right. Uh, I'm going to jump on this, this meeting. Next episode... We're gonna talk about unicorns. I got a new, I got a new bit. I got a new, I got a theme song. Came, I came with it today, but I'll, I'll bring it next week. All right, all right, guys. Thank you for, uh, <laughs> for, for enduring this. Yeah, you can't see this, but we're laying on couches. <laughs> <laughs> That Rome wasn't built in a day But how come everyone is rushing to get ahead And if I seem to be reserved, that's just my way Your questions seem like you're interrogating me Yeah, I try Then again, I don't try I get an F for effort I get a D next time Uh-huh, uh-huh I heard the lemon metaphor four million times And I don't stand for lemonade, don't ask me why And would a beverage stand be a job that be desired? And where would I get the wood and should I try? Should I try? Then again I don't try I get an F for effort I get a 65 yeah, I try, yeah, 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 then again I don't try Again, F for effort I might as well just Uh-huh, uh-huh
Don't grow like leaves on trees Then how come my money comes and goes so seasonally And I wish farmers planted plants instead of thieves My friend pays a ton of green for greener groceries Yeah, she tries Then again, she don't try She gets an F for effort She'll plant a tree next time Yeah, she tries Then again, I don't try. I get an F for effort. I get a D next time. Yeah, I try. Yeah, I try. Yeah, I try. 